I recently read that scientists have generated electricity from rain and that this method could produce up to 100 watts per square meter. That would be only a factor of four or so less than solar panels. I've seen headlines saying that it could one day overhaul our power grid, big if true. Let's have a look. Many thanks to all our supporters, especially our Patreons in Tier 4 and higher. This channel would not be possible without your help. If you enjoy my videos, please consider supporting me on Patreon or joining this channel right here on YouTube. Now about how to make electricity from rain. This research comes from a group at the National University of Singapore. They generate electricity by letting water flow through tiny plastic tubes. That's surprising because to generate electricity you need to move charges. And normally the water at the wall of the tube will build up polarization all right, but the charges would just stick there. So no moving charges, no electricity. In the new experiment now the scientists solve this problem by looking at the flow of water interrupted by air like you might have in rainfall. Because that doesn't allow the charges to get stuck, they need to move along with the water drops as they trickle down through the tube. And from that one can create electricity. It's really clever and basically a way to convert gravitational energy into electric energy. In their experiments they used a tube of approximately 30 centimeters in length and 2 millimeters in diameter, like a straw really, and fed it with a mix of water and air at 80 milliliters per minute. This generated a power of 0.4 milliwatt. According to the press release they used four of these tubes to power 12 small LEDs, so that's a clear demonstration that it indeed works. They calculate that the conversion from gravitational potential energy to electricity has 10% efficiency. How do they get their estimate of 100 watts per square meter? You just have to ask how many of these tubes you could fit next to each other vertically. They're about 2 millimeters in diameter and leaving aside details of the packing, you can estimate that roughly 250,000 will fit into a square meter. Multiply with a 0.4 milliwatt per tube and you get roughly 100 watts per square meter. Yes. But first, it's worth mentioning that the LEDs which they talk about are these little indicator lights that you can find on a circuit board, not your normal household LEDs for room lightning, which need a few watts. But much more important is the question of how much rain would you need for those 100 watts per square meter? They don't calculate this in the paper, but I did. That would be 250,000 tubes per square meter, so 250,000 times those 80 milliliters per minute that they used, that's about 20,000 liter per square meter per minute. Rainfall is typically quoted in millimeters per hour and heavy rain is something like a centimeter per hour. The rain you'd need for the 100 watts per square meter in contrast is something like a kilometer per hour. If it ever rained that much on your roof, you'd have bigger worries than your electricity bill. Another way to look at it is that if you collected rain per square meter and channeled it into those tubes, you could only run a few of those per square meter. So I think at best you generate a few milliwatts per square meter with this idea. We could, and indeed I think we should, ask what's the point? Why not just collect the rainwater and run a turbine with it? This indeed exists for, say, rain pipes, and if you have a big roof and heavy rain that can produce a few hundred watts. The efficiency of these turbines is usually in the range of 50 to 80 percent or so, so much higher than what those people propose. So this idea definitely is not going to overhaul the power grid. But that isn't to say that the idea is useless. The benefit of this idea is that you don't need a turbine. You need no moving parts and no collector. This could be useful, for example, if you have a situation with a lot of water condensation going on, maybe in a factory. You could generate electricity from that trickling water. It's also more easily portable, I'd imagine, so you could maybe use it for some measurement devices or such. In summary, it's a really clever idea and there's good evidence that it indeed works. But I'm afraid it's not going to revolutionize energy production. So keep on dusting the solar panels. Problems. I'm sure you have a few. But problem solving is a skill that you can train just like any other. 
I found that a simple and effective way to do this is with Brilliant. Brilliant offers courses on a large variety of topics in science, computer science and mathematics. All their courses have interactive visualizations and come with follow-up questions. Whether you want to learn to think like an engineer, brush up your knowledge of algebra or want to learn coding in Python, Brilliant has you covered. It's a fast and easy way to learn and you can do it whenever and wherever you have the time. And they're adding new courses each month. I even have my own course on Brilliant. That's an introduction to quantum mechanics. It'll help you understand what a wave function is and what the difference is between superpositions and entanglement. It also covers interference, the uncertainty principle and Bell's theorem. And after that, you can continue maybe with a course on quantum computing or differential equations. And of course, I have a special offer for viewers of this channel. If you use my link brilliant.org slash Sabine or scan the QR code, you'll get to try out everything Brilliant has to offer for a full 30 days and you'll get 20% off the annual premium subscription. So go and check this out. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow.